Hey everyone, my name is Alexandra and I'm a watercolor artist. I had some of you in one of my previous videos comment saying that you want to learn more about color theory. So today we're going to start with some basics on color theory and I am going to show you guys how to paint a color wheel with watercolor. Let's get started. For paper, what you'll need is a square piece of paper. I have 140 pound cold press paper. The three primary colors for color wheel are yellow, blue, and red, or yellow, blue, and magenta. For today's video, I'm using Winsor & Newton Series 3 watercolors. We have quinacridone magenta, quinacridone gold, and ultramarine green shade watercolor. You guys can use any larger paintbrush. For this tutorial, I'm using Opus Allegro number eight and a napkin for blotting your paintbrushes and two cups of water. The first thing that we're gonna do is get our paper ready for painting our color wheel. In my sample, I did a circle sort of with a pie chart. It has 12 different sections. In the one that we're painting today, I'm instead doing multiple different circles just to separate the colors a bit more. So to start, it's It'll be a little tricky to see on here just because I drew them in pencil. But to start, I want you guys to draw three circles on your paper, a little bit larger in a triangle shape. So I just found some circle cups to trace and trace those, but you guys can find anything circle shape or if you're feeling really confident, <laughs> go ahead with free handing them. But you're gonna start with three circles. All right, so once you have those drawn, you'll get your paints ready. For color wheels, typically the colors that you guys probably would have learned about in school is that you mix red, yellow, and blue. Um, more studies have kind of shown that magenta is the color that you'll use instead of red. So if you guys are using red or magenta, either one will work, is totally fine. So. Get your colors ready. I have mine on my palette here. So have my yellow, magenta, and blue. And we are gonna get started. First, we're gonna be painting our primary colors. So that's the three circles that we drew. That'll be the magenta, blue, and yellow. So I'm going to start with my yellow. And for this, I made sure to clean off my palette just so that I have a nice clean space to work with. Just because when we're mixing colors, I don't want any other colors to get in there and make it muddy. So I'm going to fill in one of my circles with yellow. And you'll notice I'm sort of mixing more onto my palette. I'm doing this just because we'll be mixing it with other colors later, so it'll make it a little bit easier to do that. And I'm just spreading it out on my palette for when I'm mixing later. Alright, so now that I have the yellow painted in nice and bright, we are going to paint the magenta. So this one I'm making sure to rinse off in my dirty water and then into my clean water just so that I'm not getting any yellow into my magenta paint. And where you guys paint your colors for this first section doesn't really matter, um, but I'm gonna put the magenta at the bottom here. And I'm just filling in my circle. And you'll notice for this one, I'm also just spreading it onto my palette a little bit. 
This will just make it easier when we're mixing our secondary and tertiary colors. All right, so now that that is filled in, I'm gonna clean off my paintbrush really well. And we are going to paint in our blue. So I'm putting the blue into the last circle that I have there. So if you guys have done any color theory at all, you would have learned that with these three colors, you can mix essentially any color that you want. If you guys are interested, I can do a video on color mixing sometime. Um, what I do often to practice is I'll pick an item that's just near me and I will try to make the color using only magenta, blue, and yellow. And yeah, it's just a really good way to understand colors better, especially painting with watercolor, because often when you want to get very specific colors for whatever you're painting, you don't always have exactly what you want. So it's really good to understand this and be able to practice it. All right, so we have finished painting our primary colors, yellow, magenta, and blue. Next, we're gonna move on to our secondary colors. So I'm gonna get you guys to draw three more circles. I already have them drawn out here, but I used, they could honestly be the same size, or I found a smaller circle to trace and just drew them right in between. So once you guys have those drawn, we're gonna start by mixing our secondary colors. So I am gonna start in here, and I'm gonna mix the yellow and magenta, and we'll see what happens. So you'll see on my palette, I have kind of spread them out. So I'm honestly just gonna go right in the middle and mix them together. So I want essentially to mix equal parts magenta with yellow. Just so I'm just taking them and mixing them together right in the middle here. And the idea is that you'll get a nice orange color out of it. All right, so next secondary color we're gonna mix will be between the yellow and the blue. And again, for this, we're aiming for equal parts. If you notice that it has more of a yellow tint or a blue tint, then you'll just go in and add the other color. Um, so this one is definitely more blue, so I'm gonna go and take a bunch of yellow from here and bring it over. And now I'm mixing the color until I end up with a nice green. So when you're painting, you'll often be able to tell if you put too much of one or the other color in because when it's in the middle, you'll see it kind of looks more warm toned or more cool toned, especially between yellow and blue. All right, so the last secondary color we're gonna paint will be between the magenta and the blue. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Just go right in the middle here on my paint palette. Okay. 
And the color that I'm looking to get out of this is gonna be a purple. All right, so once you finish painting that, then you have all three of your secondary colors. So we have orange, green, and purple. Next, we're gonna move on to our tertiary colors. For our tertiary colors, we're gonna draw some more circles. So I found something a little bit smaller to trace and I drew circles in between what I've already painted. So I have six different circles all the way around my page. So you guys can take a minute to draw those and then when you're ready, press play and we are going to start with painting our tertiary, tertiary color between the magenta and the purple here. So what I want you guys to do is mix in your paint. I have my purple and magenta right next to each other, so I'm essentially mixing right in between the two, but I'm adding a little bit more magenta into it. Now, when I go to paint, just need a little bit more water on there. You'll notice that the color should lie just in between the two. So it's not quite purple, not quite magenta. It's right in the middle. You can see more of the pink hues coming through. I'm just adding a little bit more magenta in there because I went a bit too purple toned. All right, so next we're just gonna go around the circle. We'll do between the purple and the blue. So I'm just gonna clean off my paintbrush. And again, same idea on my paint palette, the way that I've set it up, I can just mix between the purple that I've already painted and the blue that I have on my palette there. I'm just gonna add a little bit more blue in there. So essentially what you should get here is a cooler purple tone. So now between the blue and green, so this color tone right here is again a very nice blue green. This is the color that I often use if I'm painting things like eucalyptus branches, just because it has the green undertone as well as blue. Just a very nice combination of colors here. And now you guys get the idea. We're just gonna keep moving around our palette. So now I'm adding more yellow to the green that I've already created. This one is, for some reason, one of my favorites to mix because you end up with almost like a lime green. And now continuing to move around with our tertiary palette, we're gonna go yellow mixed with the orange. So another thing that practicing this with watercolors is good for is it's just more good practice for 
water control, brush control. I say if you're starting out, use any chance you can get to just practice because that is one of the hardest things to figure out when you're painting with watercolor. So definitely while you're watching this video, make sure to follow along. It also helps you understand just the nature of how colors work so much better and you guys will notice a difference when you're painting if you can understand how the colors work together. All right, so last we're gonna mix in between our magenta and our orange that we've created. So I put a little too much magenta in there. And for this one, you should get sort of a blood orange color. So another thing that I often like to do when I'm painting out color palettes, practicing these things is once it dries, I'll add another layer on top, which is what I did here. And you'll notice how much brighter the colors get when you add, add more layers with watercolor or you can use more pigmented paint when you're mixing your colors in general just because you'll notice as they dry they get lighter and lighter but there we have our color wheel so now i'm just going to talk a little bit about the colors itself on the color wheel which will hopefully help you guys understand more just about color wheel why we use it how we can use it and yeah, different aspects of it. So here in the center, we have our primary colors. So these are the main colors you use when painting. If you guys are starting out with painting and don't want to buy a ton of different paint colors, then know that you honestly can just use yellow, red, and blue, or yellow, magenta, and blue, and you guys can get any any color you want which yeah is really cool and really fun to play around with so primary colors go in the center there next we have our tertiary colors so these are the ones that go in between so again if you are brand new to painting anything really, this is so good to practice um, just to start to understand how colors work together, how we can use them. And especially with watercolor, it's when you're mixing colors. I know if you're new, sometimes it's tricky and you'll be trying to make a certain color and you'll just end up with a very, um, oh, whoops, sorry, added an extra line there. Um, start here so those are our tertiary colors um, yeah but I know that when you're new with painting sometimes you'll be trying to make a specific color and you'll end up with a really muddy brown often that means that you are mixing colors across the color wheel so say if you're mixing magenta yellow and blue essentially you should get black but depending on how much of each paint you use you might end up with brown same thing with your tertiary colors. If you're mixing green and orange, you're probably gonna end up with some form of brown. So seeing this visual is really helpful just to know if you're saying, trying to paint green and you want it to look more cool, then you know that you can take your, say green that you already have and you can add a little bit of blue to it and it'll help with that. So those are our secondary colors. Next we have our tertiary colors. So these ones, again, are just helping to understand watercolor better. And yeah, it is good to practice because it helps you get the tones that you're looking for, especially if you're new. And also if you paint a color wheel, when you're actually painting your paintings, you can refer back to this and think of the color that you're looking for. You can find it on your color wheel and it's an instant guide to know what colors do I need to mix to get the color that I'm looking for in this painting. All right, so our tertiary ones are the ones that we have all the way around the outside there. 
So a couple other things when looking at color wheels. We have complementary colors. So that is colors that are directly opposite each other on the color wheel. So for example, magenta and green or red and green would be complementary colors. Same with blue and orange, yellow and purple. So these colors when mixed together should give you black. But if you're painting a painting and you're using a combination of say, one that I commonly use is red and green, it really pops on the painting and stands out. So if you're not mixing them, but if you're using both colors, it helps to draw the eye around each element of the painting because it adds just interest and depth to your painting. So that is complementary colors. Analogous colors are colors that are side by side to each other. So it's often three colors that are side by side. So we can use, say the magenta as an example, these three colors here would be analogous. So they're essentially all the same, same color tones, same warmth in this section specifically. And often that means that they will go and blend together very nicely. All right, so the last thing for me to quickly go over with you guys with the color wheel is warm colors and cool colors. When we're thinking of warm colors, I have it written down a little bit more clearly on this color wheel, but warm colors will start with our primary color yellow and they'll go up. So it goes all the way around to our kind of pinkish purple here. Cool colors, on the other hand, will start with purple as well as our greenish <laughs> yellow there and go down from there. So again, on this wheel, this, I'm trying to see how to show you guys, but this half would be our warm colors and this half would be our cool colors. So that's just something that's good to know and good to think about when you're painting, um, especially if you're trying to portray some sort of mood or feeling with your painting, it's nice to know if you want it to be very cold or if you want it to be warm and happy and light, what colors you're using to relay that, that feeling when you're painting. All right, so that is everything that we're gonna cover today with the color wheel. If you guys want more information on specifically color mixing and how to find certain colors, what colors look good together, what colors clash, leave a comment, let me know. I would love to share more with you guys. Understanding colors is honestly so essential to painting. So please follow along this video. Let me know how you liked it. Thanks for watching. I hope that that helps you guys with how to paint a color wheel and how to use it when you're painting. If you guys wanna see some more detail on color mixing and how to know what colors to use when, leave a comment below and let me know. Also make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram at Alexandra Victoria Studio. See you next time.